The Overwhelmed Mind Ever felt like your mind is a cluttered attic? Filled with thoughts and worries? You're not alone. Statistics In fact, a recent study found that 80% of Americans experience stress every day. It's time to declutter our minds. The busy life. Our modern world is filled with distractions. And constant demands. It's no wonder we feel overwhelmed. Introducing mental clarity and happiness. Imagine a mind that is clear, focused, and filled with joy. That's the power of mental clarity and happiness. Mindfulness Meditation Strategy number one. Start by practicing mindfulness meditation. Just a few minutes each day can calm your mind and reduce stress. My name is Robin and I have attended the mindfulness class for this past these past few weeks. Um, I want to say that the most impactful session for me was the compassion letters. Um, we used the teachings of Carl Jung and we had to write a letter to someone who criticized us, someone that we disliked and someone that we admired. And after going home and reading the letter to the person that I disliked, um, that really had an impact on me. It made me more compassionate. Um, it actually made me just, just stop for a minute and think about some of the things that I may have done, um, someone that I may have wronged, and to just try to do better with that. Um, with taking this mindfulness class, I am noticing a lot of my actions. It's making me step back and um, just really think before I do something. Um, really just staying in the moment that has been a really impactful part of this lesson. Prioritize sleep. Strategy number two. Quality sleep is essential. For mental clarity. Aim for seven to nine hours of restful sleep each night. As a registered nurse, I have to work 12 and a half hour shifts. During prep, I was doing like two hours of cardio, like after work, on top of training, and I was only getting about like maybe three hours of sleep at most. But after um, starting with you, I realized that like more is not always more. So like prioritizing sleep and making sure I get enough rest, um, it really decreased my cortisol levels. And it was like one of the most like amazing things that I found out. And yeah, I'm super grateful for, you know, that method and that we found out like what works for, for me. Physical activity. Strategy number three. Exercise is a powerful way to boost mood and reduce stress. Find an activity you enjoy and make it a regular part of your routine. One of the greatest challenges I had was uh, my overall stamina, just uh, keeping up uh, on cardio. And it made me mad, actually. And so, so I'm going to do something about it and committed to fitness. Definitely in shape person. But now, it's not just the fact that I'm lifting significant amount of weight more than I was before. It's about the fact that I come in here and I feel good. And then I leave and I still feel good and accomplished. And I feel like what this hour does is not just about taking care of my body, but it takes care of my mental well-being too. Set clear goals. Strategy number four. Having clear goals gives your mind a direction. Break down big goals into smaller, achievable steps. 
I realized that I was wrong about goals. I used to think that if you set a goal, you're gonna be unhappy in the present, and if you hit the goal, then whatever, and if you don't hit the goal, then you're gonna be sad about it. But now I've realized that goals are actually useful for all these different reasons, and it's really about the yin and yang balance between self-improvement and self-acceptance. Like, it's totally okay for me to be fully satisfied with my life right now, which I am, but at the same time, having a goal of becoming a Gymshark athlete or whatever. And this tension between these two states of self-improvement and self-acceptance, we don't have to resolve it. And apparently this is one of the key differences between Eastern and Western styles of thinking. Like in the West, we are very keen to have a logical conclusion to every point. And this is how I definitely think where it's like, okay, well, how do I reconcile this idea that on the one hand, goals are kind of legit, but on the other hand, I wanna be happy with where I am. And I used to think, that I had to resolve this conundrum. If we think about it more like yin and yang as like apparently Eastern philosophers and Eastern thinkers would think about it, it's like on the one hand, you've got self-improvement. On the other hand, you've got self-acceptance and the two can coexist in harmony. And it's really just about navigating a balance of the two rather than trying to solve the equation and come to the bottom of it all. Practice gratitude. Strategy number five. Cultivate gratitude by focusing on the positive aspects of your life. It can shift your mindset and boost happiness. Declutter your environment. Strategy number six. A cluttered environment can lead to a cluttered mind. Declutter your space to create a sense of calm and clarity. Day 105 of 365 days of gratitude and I am grateful to be decluttering getting things straightening out things going through those old drawers cleaning out everything just so you can declutter your mind so you can focus even more properly um and just creating a clean airy space for your thoughts to flow you to flow so i'm i'm happy to be decluttering on this good sunday what self-compassion strategy number seven Practice self-compassion and treat yourself with care. Be kind to yourself. The most important thing that I'll be taking away from this class is just the ability to like show myself loving kindness and um, accept all parts of me, like even the parts that get stressed out or the parts that get angry sometimes. Cool. Conclusion. By incorporating these strategies into your daily life, you can elevate your mind and experience greater mental clarity and happiness. Remember, it's a journey, not a destination. Share this video. Subscribe for more mental health tips and wellness advice. And hit the bell notification button.